We're going to move to the next part of our evening entertainment with some pitches from a number of entrepreneurs and support organisations. Um, we're only going to give them three minutes. We're going to put a clock on them. Um, and um, we're going to hear a bit about what they're doing and what they hope to get from Good Lab in terms of collaboration or from you guys in general. So I'm going to ask Simone. Okay, we're away. Away, three minutes. Yeah. Hello, um, I just want to say thank you for letting me pitch and um, it's nice to meet some of you earlier. Uh, my name's Simone, I run Paper Arts, it's a social enterprise uh, based in Broadmead. Uh, we're an arts project that aims to help young people to get into the creative industries. Um, I actually set up this project um, by winning a UE Enterprise Award. I think I was quite naive, I didn't really understand what social enterprise was then. I didn't really know that what I was doing was a social enterprise. Um, but I've definitely learned that and I've learned the benefits of that. And I'm looking forward to being part of the Good Lab. Um, so what we do, we provide a lot of services to young people. Um, we have an affordable studio space. Uh, we also provide a printing service for artists and photographers. Um, other things that we do are we have an exhibition space which is really affordable and really accessible. It also allows people from Broadmead to be able to sort of come into the space and experience local art without having to go all the way to sort of Southfield or um, up to Gloucester Road. Um, we also run quite a few different projects. So we've done Take Part, which was um, a festival of events which we ran free for young people to sort of learn about getting into the industry from industry talks to how to write a create CV, how to fund a project in the creative industries. Um, we had 200 people come to that week um, of events, which was really positive. Um, we also are running a new project starting next week called Creative Drop, where we get 10 creative professionals to work with 10 uh, young people to help those young people be inspired to get into the industry. And, and what we're going to do as a team is take, uh, we're going to the Sea Life Centre in Eastern and we're going to transform their space to make it more inviting, um, to also show young people how that they can contribute to social change. So that's some of the projects that we're working on at the moment. Some of the things that we have to offer, um, we have a broad network of artists, so anybody who wants to communicate um, a project or something they're interested in offering to the sort of art community, that's something that we can sort of access, that's something we can offer. Um, we're quite a young organisation as well, so we're quite close to the people that we support, so we feel like we understand them quite well. So if you have any questions about um, how to access that audience, that's something that we could possibly help with. Um, we also have a training space uh, where we um, run all of our workshops and events and talks. Uh, that training space is for hire, so if anybody wants a nice, bright, creative space that's quite flexible, um, then we have that space that we can hire out to a better rate for other social enterprises. Um, we also have our gallery space for hire, so if there's a social enterprise out there that really wants to communicate to the general uh, sort of Bristol audience, it's a really good opportunity for social enterprise to maybe um, showcase what they do um, at quite an affordable rate, and uh, which will reach a sort of range of people. Three minutes is up. Oh! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you can also you can go and get your Christmas presents. Oh yeah, um, we run CoLab, which is um, a really great space to get Christmas presents, and uh, we support over 150 local artists, and it's a great place to find things. Thank Very you. Good. Where is it? So we are opposite, um, outside Debenhams, next to Starbucks, right in the centre, so please come visit us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so it's back. So we're going to see who the next one up is. Oh, is it John? Okay, so balance, there's John around. Yeah. Thank you. Start the cup. Hi everyone, I'm John. Uh, John Lewis, like the shop, so you can't forget it. <coughs> the joke never gets old. But um, basically, I'm, I'm um, chief stationer at Balance Stationery. Uh, we are a social enterprise. Um, although I like to call it a uh, for-purpose company in that we are about a purpose um, and what we do is we're a, um, a purpose office supplies company so we'll supply business supplies to businesses, we, we supply with schools 
Um, and we can also do uh, one-man bands or individual um, organisations as well. Um, and what we then do is we, as you, well, effectively as you buy from us, we can we can supply anything that any business needs would need. So everything from I'm just gonna show you a copy of our catalogue. So everything we have over twenty five thousand products. So everything from office furniture to your basic paper supplies, right through to the important things like tea and coffee and biscuits, we can supply everything. Um, and then what we do is we link these businesses that buy from us to schools in developing countries. So they effectively adopt a school. Um, and then we will supply to that school, but they are then become linked with um, education supplies um, at a basic level. We do an advanced level of supplies. We then look at doing teacher training. We also look at teacher salaries. And we're also looking at building schools and doing a building school program. So really quite exciting. Um, what we're saying to businesses is use your expenses. You have an expense, use your expense to make a difference. Um, and we will match or beat what you are currently paying. So it will save you money, do some good in the world, and the rewards are tremendous. So we'll say, you know, even if you buy from Viking or Stables, wherever you buy from, we will match or beat those prices. We can do that. In fact, um, we have a, a couple of customers in the room actually, Real Ideals organization, um, of, of, of what we work with, and we'll be able to supply stationery with them. We've also done some other work on our social impact with the schools that we work with around Bristol. But um, you know, if you have a business or you know a business owner or you're connected within in stationery, um, please look us up, Balance Stationery, on, on the website. And please, we're, we're looking. Obviously, you know, customers are great for us. Um, and also, we're looking at how we can develop in our skills, such as how we can monitor our development within the developing countries and the schools that we work with. And so we're looking for you know, anyone that would like to sit on the board of advisors with us to give us direction in business, we, we, we look for that. And also to how we can monitor in our, our, our development of, with the schools and, and what we do. But um, yeah, that's balance history. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, is Anne still here? Yes, thank you. Hello, I'm Anne Mike Joy from the Social Enterprise Mark, and we are Certification Authority for Social Enterprises. Um, how we can help Good Lab, I would say, use us. Uh, uh, we can help you define your social enterprise. We have criteria that have been agreed by the social enterprise sector that explain what a social enterprise is, so it's a useful resource in that respect. Um, we're a social enterprise ourselves, so our profits are used to raise awareness of social enterprise. We run marketing campaigns and we lobby on behalf of our mark holders. Um, we recently launched the Social Enterprise Gold Mark, uh, which is an impact assessment tool to help organisations look at the social enterprise aspects of their business. Um, look at where they might need to improve or where they are particularly strong. We had a fantastic launch event at the House of Commons where we launched with Salford University, John Taylor Hospice and um, Integrated Care 24 and they all demonstrated uh, social enterprise excellence in the way that they're running their business. So um, why might you consider getting the social enterprise mark? Well there's no legal definition of social enterprise so, um, based on our consultation with representatives from the sector, we agreed the criteria on what um, defines a social enterprise. So, if you get the social enterprise mark, which is that, badge, it, um, it's effectively a, sh a shortcut, uh, it's a sign of trust, so your stakeholders know that you genuinely are operating as a social enterprise, using your profits for a social purpose. Dave, call of Brave. Not here? No, I thought I hadn't seen him actually. Um, Kesty, applied. Um, hello, my name is Kesty Morrison. I'm here representing um, ATI, the Applied Theatre Action Initiative. Um, we run a programme that links young people from different countries and cultures through exploring a social topic that affects and connects them. Uh, so our pilot project earlier this year connected the Bristol Old Vic Youth Theatre uh, with a youth uprising, a youth theatre based in Oakland in California, um, two very different demographics. 
Uh, over a 12-week period, they used theatre and spoken word exercises and techniques to explore the self-selected themes of sex, violence, and the media's effect on young people. And they created two separate pieces of theatre in their own prospective countries. Um, over the 12 weeks, the two groups sent um, each other videos, they Skyped, they emailed, they listened to each other's music um, and poetry, and they used each other's work in their own performances. Um, ATI is a solution-based project, and there's a real emphasis that is, is placed on creating pieces of theatre that include the young people's solutions. So we're empowering those involved to make positive proposals to their own communities. Um, so the audience invited to our final showings are experts and influential people in the field that they've been exploring and are therefore able to support the young people to implement the solutions that the young people have suggested. Uh, we have a discussion at the end of each performance to faci facilitate this. Our pilot scheme was an excellent example of the power of community. Uh, we sold out the Creative Youth Network in town, in the main theatre, and we had to bring in extra chairs. And there were representatives in the audience from the Arnolfini, the Watershed, Ujima Radio, Baby Boomtown, BCFM, Bristol University, SPAN, Bristol Black Archives, The Cable, The Spark Magazine, Brunel College, The Bristol Vic, and the Radical Film Network, amongst many, many others. Um, in our next project, we're, we're aiming to really harness that support with an aftercare project uh, that will help the young people connect with these organisations. So as peers, parents, community members, business people and those in local government hear directly from these young people, each project connecting to a group in another country through digital media fosters global understanding and community a digital study abroad that actually is working to solve problems on the ground, locally. So we offer unique theatre arts programming and support the proliferation of applied theatre as a medium for social transformation around the world. Our initiative uses theatre and spoken word strategies to examine and solve social issues and we strive to increase civic engagement and accessible art with a focus on reaching underserved populations. Uh, we've had so much in-kind support, which we are so incredibly grateful for, but we are running uh, the project on an invisible shoestring, um, so any financial support is most, most welcome. Um, we're also interested in hearing from anyone interested in collaboration, researchers, partners, volunteers, anyone offering office space or rehearsal space, performance space, anyone who feels called to this project in any way to helping us support young people to have a conversation about the future of this planet. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Cohen, I'm from Unlimited uh, and I'm here to do a special shout out today uh, about the Big Venture Challenge programme. So that is um, Unlimited's investment readiness programme. Uh, Unlimited run a lot of programmes to support social entrepreneurs right from ideas all the way through and the Big Venture Challenge is sort of our top program where we help uh, ventures bring on investment. Um, so we are looking for, it's open now, it opened last week on Tuesday uh, and we're, the call for applications goes on until the 3rd of February. Uh, so if you are a social venture and you're looking in the next 12 to 18 months to take on um, some investment and you would like support to do that, then the Big Venture Challenge could be a program that would be useful for you and we'd be really keen to hear, hear from you. Um, we're looking for social ventures that are hoping to raise between 50 and 500,000 pounds in the next 12 to 18 months uh, that can identify, uh, that, that can show a track record and route to market and revenue streams. Um, so this is like the, uh, the criteria that we're looking for. Um, that have a theory of change that's kind of baked into the heart of their organisation um, and that they can demonstrate their social impact um, and that they can articulate an ambitious plan for growth. Um, this year the Big Venture Challenge is, has a particular focus on the South West of England so we'd love to see some Bristol ventures in the mix and applying, that would be great. 
Um, and if you're interested, what I can do is give me your details and I can hook you up with one of our venture managers so that they can do a kind of one-to-one -one consultation with you and work out whether Big Venture Challenge is right for you. Um, just to give you a bit of uh, a, some of the facts, the, the Big Venture Challenge, you get um, intensive support from those venture managers over the next 12 months. Uh, we've also brought in over 60 um, investors who are new to the space, so new to the social investment space, um, have come on board and we've raised for those ventures together over the three year programme so far a total of £5 million. So it's quite a significant amount of money that we're bringing into those social ventures for them to grow and scale. So if it sounds like you might fit the bill, then we'd really, really love to hear from you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kyle, I run EMC, which stands for the Ecomedia Collective. Um, I actually enjoy being here purely because of the fact that I hate being in this kind of situation. I don't know if this is something that many of you can identify with, but I, while I'm the one talking, I hate the sound of my own voice, which is a bit strange because over the years I come from a radio broadcasting background and I've been paid a lot of money to talk to people I can't see. But Part of that involved me working for the South African equivalent of the BBC. I set up the first community radio station in Mandela's hometown. I broke the South African government's monopoly on broadcasting. They'd been the only broadcaster for 50 years. Uh, that led to me going to little villages in the region of Transkei in South Africa and finding people who didn't have electricity, but they did have a story to tell and turning them into DJs. Um, Fast forward 10 years, and I was um, helping set up the world's first online radio station for Jews and Muslims. And a year later, I was studying social enterprise at Columbia University in New York. So that blend of finding other people's stories and basically helping them turn it into a soundtrack using their voice was the kind of thing I liked, because there's nothing better than hearing other people tell their own stories, because everyone has them. But that blend of soundtracks and social enterprise really puts me here today talking to you because we set up the Community Collective to help create soundtracks of social change. And what we do is we take people who have amazing things going on in a room, they deliver social good, positive societal improvements, um, but they're invisible because these days if you're not on Facebook, you're not online, you don't, for the purposes of the outside world, you don't exist. And research recently in the non-profit sector showed that the biggest challenge facing um, non-profits were, one, the need to be online. Everyone realised they need to do more with online media. But the problem was they didn't have the time or the expertise, but they all had something amazing to share. So what we do is we help them get started. If people need to make videos for YouTube, make audio podcasts, if they need to live stream the events that they're doing or the, the corporate client we get has a person there who thinks, well, what they'd like to do is use us, because every time they use us, that revenue helps us deliver these services for free to a non-profit who can't use it otherwise. That's the kind of thing we do. Um, our USP is trying to make sure that sound is me telling me I've got about 20 seconds left. Um, the big thing is, that's an example of what we focus on, sound. Our USP is we try to focus on making audio rather than video. And this reminds me that I need to tell everyone about the fact that we've just been given a grant to deliver services free to organisations that don't have the funding for it. So if you would like to be able to get free videos or audio podcasts made or live stream your event live over the internet, come and talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much. Hi, Ash. Uh, you're up next. Uh, I'm Ash Phillips, and I'm the founder and director of Yenna, um, which is actually, this one just here, um, you can't really see. Um, what is Yenna? Yenna stands for the Young Entrepreneur Networking Association. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, so what we actually do is arrange business networking events for people uh, that we consider young, which is 15 to 30, which I think encompasses everybody in the room, I think. Don't worry about the rest of you. Um, we, uh, 
we, we offer our events to people um, who, from entrepreneurial backgrounds, but also students, professionals, anybody that tends to maybe not have too much of an income, and that's why we tend to offer our events for, uh, for free. Um, so we put on our events at the Barclay Square Hotel and invite uh, great speakers along, um, speakers such as uh, Colin Needham recently, um, the founder of IMDB, which is a Bristol-based company, um, which I only found out about six months ago, came along to talk to everybody about how he founded the business and how he started it, why he started it, and what he learned along the way. Um, the fact that it was a free event for people that are currently studying, currently starting a business, um, currently looking to move through their profession or into a new one, uh, really had a lot of knowledge to embark on those people, and so they were able to learn and, and, and use it in their own projects. Um, what have we done so far? We've uh, been running for about 18 months and only in Bristol. Um, we've piloted the event in London and we currently have around about five locations set up to launch in January, February of next year, um, including London, Bath, Aberystwyth, Nottingham and potentially Berlin as well. Um, our website is currently under construction. If you grab a card from me, you'll see it. Um, that's because we're turning it into a social network as well. So everybody will be able to take that conversation they have in the room online and continue the conversation there. You don't have to decide whether you should connect on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. You'll be able to connect on the Yenna website as well. Um, what can we offer? We can offer free networking events for anybody between 15 and 30. Anybody outside of that, we'd love to welcome you along as a speaker. I'm sure you've all got great stories to tell, so please come and do that. Um, any more help as far as uh, offering services? I'm sure we'll be speaking to EMC afterwards about audio, um, then we're open to that too. Um, what, what, what would we like to see um, happen is uh, find partners, find sponsors, find new locations in new areas and find new group leaders. So uh, Reza is hopefully going to be the founder of Vienna um, Bath and so we're looking for more people in those areas too. So if you know anybody outside of Bristol that might want to young, uh, run a young network, then please let me know. It's completely voluntary, we're looking to monetize, so if you know any sponsors or any partners, then also let me know about that. And uh, I've got plenty of business cards, so I'll be in the room for after I finish babbling. Cheers. <laughs> Is Bonnie here? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Standing in front of me. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it's a bright light. <laughs> Hello. It looks like everybody's kind of running away from a plague victim with <laughs> big blank space. So Beacon Farms is a community benefit society. We set up about a year ago and we're still pretty young. So uh, I guess my asks are kind of the same as my offers at this point. Um, what we're about is safeguarding some of Bristol's highest quality land. I went to a crowdfunding workshop last week where we agreed that our new strapline should be soil is sexy. Because we keep saying to ourselves, well, nobody cares about soil, nobody's interested in soil, we can find another way to talk about um, But actually, soil is quite sexy. Bristol has some very good soil and it has some of the best soil in the UK. Under 3% of the UK has soil. It's good, really good for growing vegetables. And it's really hard to grow vegetables when the weather is shit and climate change is happening. It's very important that we look after this soil. Um, so part of our aim is to use this soil to grow vegetables instead of building houses on it or doing anything else with it. And so therefore we want to get hold of some of this land, either buy it or lease it, and put growers on it to grow food for us. And we'd like to support new entrants into market gardening. I have to compete with the drumming now as well. Um, so yes, there are actually some brave people out there that are, not all of them are young, some of them are early retirees that want to get into growing horticultural crops for a career and they learn how to, to do horticulture and then they're looking for some land to start on, they have to get infrastructure, they have to do their business plan, they get going and it's tough and sometimes they don't make it. So we'd like to set up plots where they can actually get their business going we'd like to help them get the enterprise skills they need to make a success of their business. Um, so we're kind of, a, our idea is to have incubator starter farms on really good Bristol soil. Um, we did have some land lined up and some money to buy it, and then the farmer decided he didn't want to sell. So my first task is, have you got any really high quality veg <laughs> growing land? And I've actually had a couple of good conversations tonight with people from UWE, because UWE does own quite a lot of this really good land. Um, so I'll be sending some emails tomorrow to see if we can talk to them about starting a university farm instead of starting some more sports fields. Um, both are important. 
but it's about most appropriate use of the term. Um, so watch out for things about the blue finger, because that's the Bristol name for this high quality strip of land. There's lots of stuff going on around it because of metro bus junctions and things like that. And we're Beacon Farms is about starting market gardens there. So yeah, number one, land. Number two, um, we've actually just heard, I'm probably not supposed to talk about it, that we've been recommended for some green capital funding um, for a project that we've put forward called the Ur Bristol Urban Food Producers. So it's Beacon Farms is leading on it, but it's lots of partners in Bristol of urban food producers. And we're, we're going to be helping do lots of different things, um, including helping them to find land, helping them to get enterprise skills, helping them to get group discounts and share machinery and infrastructure and find new markets. And one of the things we want to do is start something called the Bristol Certificate, Livelihood Skills for Land Workers, which is to help all of the apprentices and interns who are already on these projects to get some of the skills that they need to make their businesses work when they stop being interns and apprentices. So another ask I have, is anyone out there, which this room seems to be full of, people who know about enterprise, writing good business plans, um, knowing about finance and budgeting and cash flows and things like that, we are going to be wanting to give some mentoring to some of the growers that are out there. We also want to develop this certificate with the Crossdales Institute who will be certifying it. But we need to know the sorts of things that you think are really important for any business person to know, and specifically horticulturalists, that we can build into this certificate so they have the skills they need. So if anyone's interested in that, that'd be great. Thanks. Bye. Next we've got H. Raj. Is it going to be cool? Yeah, it will be me. Hi there, good evening. Um, seems almost a little out of place and weird considering the fact most of this is a, uh, talking about a social thing, but uh, essentially we're uh, representing a group of us. Um, we've been working, providing non-profit projects to uh, local authorities for a good few years now. Um, we completed the Creative Common project last year as a non-profit. Um, we've just finished the Bristol Green Capital offices and hub as well. So we are a group that approach construction in a weird way. The construction industry is renowned um, as, a, as a money pit. It's a great place to make profit and that's why that's what drives it. Um, we've come at it from a slightly different angle um, and to my detriment and my wife's never-ending support of the fact that uh, essentially we have come up with an idea to build modular housing um, within a small network environment within Bristol. So what we're looking to do is be able to provide affordable housing to people which still enhances technology. Currently the housing that we build is not up to standard at all. It's very poor quality and it's very expensive. A lot of this is down to the land that it's put on but we feel that there's still a massive responsibility by local builders to start building houses. At the moment, very few houses are built by self-builders, and that's what we want to provide. We've developed a system which allows for houses to be built um, around a, a shipping container model. Um, a lot of people say I'm absolutely mental for even thinking about using a shipping container because they look horrible. Um, they do provide a way for us to be able to build. It's a controlled environment build system. And hopefully the, what we've developed allows small groups to be able to build. There's currently very little prefabricated manufacture of buildings in the UK. And that's down to massive needs for investments. Factories cost a lot of money. When you've got a massive factory, this does mean you have to bring in a lot of money to it. There's gotta be high profits to support a business like that. Our model, we hope to prove, enables people to build houses with a group of no more than five people. So we've got an established a system that we've developed which allows any group or small group of builders to get together and then to be able to say to their local community, we can deliver houses for you and we can deliver high technology houses for you. Um, I'm probably really under time, but that's what we do. We would like to make some links. I mean, as I said, we're at the very early stages of what we're doing. Through the design of the house, it enables you to encompass lots of technology within it which will allow us to be able to monitor the properties, to be able to control your water usage, your power usage, and to be able to interact with you in the same way that your car tells you when it's sick, your house should do exactly the same thing, rather than it just running itself into the ground. We're hoping that 
through the ability for the technology being in, within the houses, we can record all the data, so we'd like to be able to link with UWE or any of these other people to be able to sort of facilitate that. Thank you very much. Um, well, I, as my friends say to me, actually, I, um, uh, why bother to use the telephone? Just open the window, but I will use my phone. Um, what I'd like you to do, actually, I'd like all the people sitting to stand and all the people standing, not all of you, because there won't be enough seats, but just do a swap. Just do a swap and move about for a minute. Come on, just move about, because we've forgotten that we've got bodies. Um, there's also, I don't know if there's anybody Scottish in the audience, but there's a phrase from Scotland that says um, when you want people to get closer, you say curry in. So those people speaking at the back, can you curry in? Please. So come a bit closer, I won't bite and I don't have anything contagious. Thank you. <laughs> They're still speaking, what can you say? Um, okay, so this is me. I am Networking Southwest. Um, what am I giving and what am I getting? And what do you want to know? So currently, We've become very clever as human beings. What we've done is designed so many wonderful technologies that actually we don't have to move anymore. So we can, you know, move from our centrally ha heated houses in the morning into our centrally heated cars, into our centrally heated offices, and then do it all in reverse. And we don't actually have to spend a nanosecond outside. And we also have set up things in such a way that actually we don't have to move once we're even in the office. You know, it's like a tiny little click of a mouse. So what I'm doing is taking businesses for a walk. I'm a train group facilitator. What I do is I get you to have real conversations on the move. Why is this important? Currently, we are sitting for something like 9.3 hours a day, more than we are sleeping at 7.7. .7. Those are approximate figures, but that's roughly how it is. It's a nonsense. We have forgotten that we are not just as... Um, What's his name? Ken Robinson said, you know, our bodies are not just there to get our heads to meetings. You know, it is actually, you know, these things require us to move. We're still living in caveman and cavewomen bodies. And unless we actually take notice of that, we are stacking up so many problems for ourselves in terms of our health. So what I do is I take businesses for a walk. I help you to have better conversations on the move. I'm around now for at least... 20 minutes if you want to have a conversation with me. My business cards are there at the foot of that. If I'm engaged in a conversation, what am I giving? I am giving four places free to any business, organization, whatever you are, um, who books a network for 10 people. So four places will be free, and that's before the 31st of December. Thank you very much. I'm Rosalind Turner, Networking Southwest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Am I the last? You are. Actually. I'm out. Um... Well, thanks for not walking outside <laughs> and leaving the room. So yeah, my name is Max Luek and I run that project called Sam Bamboo's Rapti. And um, the whole idea behind this is to say, so there's a uh, sport, Rugby Sevens, the smaller form of Rugby Union, which is massively uh, growing at the moment including the uh, being part of the Olympic program uh, 2016 in Rio. And, but what that sport lacks at the moment is development. So um, what happens is a lot of uh, countries pick it up and they put a lot of money or funding into development, but in Britain they focus more on the elite level and only put money in the elite. So what we thought is to um, change this around and try to focus on the on the youngsters and on the development. So what we do is we um, provide platforms. So we create tournaments for uh, youngsters. We go into schools, coach the sport there. We have an own development squad which trains regularly and goes on tournaments. 
but we also offer merchandise and um, all these areas are development focused so that means not only the players um, are coach but also we are looking to get like students involved on the business side especially the event side or the merchandise design so we are looking to um, take this development philosophy and and really put it all through the um, through the different different areas and we work with uh, a couple of universities so UE has been really supportive but then um, Heartbreak in, in Gloucester which is part of UE is like where we are based but then now we're spreading out into Uni of Gloucestershire and we're also very keen to get with Bristol University and Bath so just to spread out further in the southwest so what I'm looking for what we are looking for is to make more connections so for example next year we run for the second year a big tournament with Harbury College and um, this doesn't require much uh, much funding and it's just a great way to get like loads of social teams but also uh, university teams together and we could easily do that with other universities and we are hoping to do this. Then we start our training in April so we offer to any young young people between 17 and 22, 23 to come down and give them an opportunity to play the sport and to, to travel with us to the tournaments. We're looking to get into schools now more and more, so um, we're looking to connections in schools. And we also run workshops, so we're looking to help uh, support coaches, referees, and team managers. Um, am I done? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. We have one more. The logo didn't get put on. <laughs> Lydia. So Lydia Cooper Design. Hi everyone, I'm Lydia. Um, I'm going to talk about my ethical fashion brand, which is yet without a name, <laughs> in the process of trying to think up a name which is not my own, because I really don't enjoy using that. Um, I believe it is not right that we all wear clothes we have no idea where or under what conditions they were made. Poverty-stricken communities in foreign countries are still paying the true cost of our cheap, often disposable clothes. I want to start an ethical fashion brand promoting the dying art of made-to-measure dressmaking in England with increased transparency in the supply chain so customers know exactly who made it and where. Ethical fashion is not a new idea, but what will differentiate my venture will be the shopping experience provided by a unique made-to-measure service as well as a pre-made ready-to-wear collection. I hope to launch a website and eventually open shops with on-site sewing workshops that offer the client the opportunity to partially design their own tailor-made garment. I also hope to start a campaign tracking the complete supply chain of each item that would be recorded with photos and possible for the buyer to access via the website when typing in the serial number on the label. In the future, I want to set up workshops all over the country with on-site childcare to train and then employ supposedly unemployable women who want to work. However, to start with, I am working with a sewing group called So Clever in Norwest. I'm going to pay them to produce any designs I make to sell to students. I'm designing collections for three student charity fashion shows next year in Bristol, Durham and Edinburgh that I hope to use as opportunities to raise awareness of the brand and the sewing group among the students. I hope to improve links between the student community and the local Bristol community by contributing to enabling So Clever to become a self-sustaining business so that they can continue to rent the space for their group when their funding runs out in March next year. By the end of this academic year, I would like to organise my own fashion show and clothes sale at a venue in Bristol and promote it as the official launch party for the website that I hope to get up and running by then. I'm looking for any help in towards realising this idea in the form of funding, advice, and I know my special weakness is marketing and promotion and, yeah, so, and if you ever want any clothes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you everybody. I know we've run over time. It's great that you've all stayed and supported the entrepreneurs. I've really enjoyed hearing all about that. Um, some great businesses coming forward that are doing really, really great things. So this is the start of the Good Lab. This is the launch and we want to be seeing more of this.
as we mentioned, we're going to be having five events throughout the year, themed events, and we're going to be working with up to 20 entrepreneurs in our Good Lab incubation space. A lot of that information is going to be shared on the internet, and as well as the film from tonight. So we're going to create a resource where you can come back and learn more and more as we develop new tools and help people to move forward and scale up their um, businesses so that we have a bigger social impact here in Bristol. Thank you very much.